are here along the parade route. A big part of what's going to happen today is uh, honoring frontline workers. NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea joining me in person, as yes. promised. Yes, that's right. We're going to be in studio, but we're here. That's right. Uh, and so let me begin first with being down here today, what this means for you, what it means for the NYPD to honor so many of the officers who were frontline workers and didn't take off yeah. during the pandemic. Yeah, thanks for that, Dan. And just a message to all the frontline workers, whatever your role was, a big thank you. A thank you for what you did last year and just keeping the city going. So that's first and foremost. And then I got to squeeze it in. If you are coming down here today, public transportation. Public driving is uh, driving is going to be a challenge. Yeah, certainly. And and as is security, right? So real quick on the security front, how are you involved in today? What are people going to see? Uh, we, you're going to see a lot of cops along the route. Uh, you're going to see some cops on the route. Uh, if, you, if you're coming down here today, expect to uh, have a safe, safe day. It's going to be hot, hydrate, and things will go well. So that's on the parade front, but this is our bi-weekly conversation that we have. So I do want to get you, even though we're here along the route, on some of the issues and news items of the day. Yep. And so first and foremost, let's talk about what happened yesterday with Governor Andrew Cuomo coming out and announcing a state of emergency for gun violence, the first in the country. Your reaction to that? Well, I think we announced it last year, uh, you know, and, and I'm glad that the governor uh, came out and, and put it on the, on the forefront that it, that it is a problem that we're facing right now. I, I think that uh, I think you got to get uncomfortable here, Dan. And the uncomfortable conversation for a lot of people is we have to address that law that was passed in 2019 and the implications that we're feeling today. What and, law? And, I, and I can assure you that, you know, as uncomfortable it is to go back and take a hard look at the implications of the bail reform, it's more uncomfortable for the people that are dealing with the aftermath of it in communities across this state, but particularly here in New York City. So are you saying that be Governor Cuomo, who signed that legislation, should take a look at it and knowing what yes. you know now maybe shouldn't have signed it. It's not the governor, it's all of us. I, I think it's, it's, it's advocates on both sides. I think it's elected officials. I think it's prosecutors, certainly the police. But Dan, go back and watch the tapes. From January of last year, we went on record right away and outlined what was going to happen in the next 18 months. No one could have predicted the next 18 months. And it's gotten cloudier and cloudier, a lot of different issues, certainly COVID, courts, a lot of things. But until we really address what's going on, New Yorkers are going to suffer. Mm -hmm. And that law has to change. It has to change. We have to get to the root cause here. So and we have a drastic, drastic reduction. For the governor to come out and say state of emergency in New York City, has he had a conversation with you about this issue? We, we have spoken. I have spoken to many people about this issue. OK, and then at the same time that that was going on, you're at a press conference with the mayor yeah. talking about crime numbers overall in New York City from June to June, saying shootings are down, violence is down. It seems like a juxtaposition to what he was saying. If you look at that interview yesterday, uh, uh, right here at City Hall, um, you know, we saw some progress, but no one in the NYPD is satisfied with what's going on in New York City. A 20 percent reduction in year over year, we still have far too many innocent victims being shot. We still have too many incidents of gun violence. So you, you see the two positions there, Dan, but believe me, the work continues. I, I spoke about some of the really targeted cases that we were doing yesterday, taking violent, violent gang members off the street. We need more of that. We need consequences for the gun arrests that are being right. made. We need to take a look at parolees that are reoffending. We need to look at all this. But when you have a drastic reduction in such a short period of time of state prison populations and Rikers jail yeah. population without adequate planning what's going to happen. This is not a surprise to anyone on our side. I want to talk about, uh, I spoke to Terrence Monahan, formerly of the NYPD, yep. this past Sunday on Picks on Politics, and he talked about perception versus reality. And while the numbers may be going down in what they're saying, you can tell numbers all day long. If the perception is, I don't feel safe, then people aren't going to feel safe. His answer was to put more police out there on the streets. Is that an option? Well, we, we work with what we have, and, and certainly people want to see cops on the street, every community across New York City. We could get up from this chair right now, walk to any corner, and stop any New Yorker walking by. They don't care about statistics. They, they know what they see, whether it's riding on the train, whether it's on a bodega on their block, whether it's in Bushwick, Brooklyn, High Bridge, the Bronx, or Southeast Jamaica. Uh, New Yorkers are not dumb. They know what they see, and, and they're asking for more cops. They're asking for more enforcement. And we just got to get that right formula. We need also, balance. Also, at the same time, you do have communities who are looking for alternatives to police at the same time. So it's a balancing act. Absolutely. 
And the key is you have to listen to all, and you have to kind of find that strike, that balance. But I'll remind you, and we've had this conversation before, yeah. just two years ago, we had the lowest incarceration of any major city in the country and the lowest crime. So it doesn't mean we were done, doesn't mean we, we weren't looking for ways to get better, but it is a, a balance that we have to continue to strike, and you can't throw out the bad. Right. Real quick on subway crime, that seemed to be a big issue among our viewers and a lot of polling that we did during the election cycle. Yeah. Any new numbers to report? Are they going down, trending down? It, it was a great opportunity yesterday, I think, to look at, um, you know, one month you can have aberrations. We're now yeah. six months in. We have that asterisk last year you're comparing it to. But when you look at the crime in subways for the six, first six months of this year, it's the same statistic I quoted yesterday. We've never seen less in the last yeah. 23 years. But the ridership is down. So right. we know that we have some issues. We, we still see some mental health issues. I think Kathy's done a great job mm -hmm. deploying. We're still surging extra people into the transit system. Um, so again, that, that perception versus reality. I also want to talk about the news of what came out yesterday. Eric Adams poised to be the Democratic nominee for mayor. Have you had conversations with Eric Adams? I have not. What I would say on this is whoever is the next mayor, I wish them nothing but all success. I live in New York City. Uh, I think we all want that. You know, there, there is this talk of when a new commission, when a new mayor comes in, that they change administrations. Is there a future for Commissioner Shea within the NYPD? I'm still focused on day to day. Uh, anyone that knows me knows that that's how I operate. There's a lot of work to do here. That's what I demand. I'm, I'm getting up from this chair, heading back to one police plaza, and having a meeting with all the chiefs. What's going on today? What do we have to do? Staying commissioner through January. Every day is a, is, a, is a great surprise here, but staying, staying is the plan. Uh, staying is the plan. And then lastly, there's been a lot of rumors and talk about somebody in your administration, one of the top three women within the MIPD, Judy Harrison, Juanita Holmes, that could be poised to take over. Whoever, whoever um, the new mayor picks to be a commissioner, should we go down that route? Um, there is a healthy group of people, men and women, in this agency that New York City should be confident about. I have no doubt about that. Commissioner Dermot Shea, appreciate you coming out here in person on a hot morning. You dressed in a full suit with a tie, making me feel underdressed. Well, you should be. You should be. We'll take that up at the next interview, man. Well, exactly. Uh, Commissioner Shea, thank you for not missing this week for our bi-weekly series. You. Appreciate it. And uh, stay cool along the route, too, you, in your office. Enjoy the day, New York.